Today we're going to have a look at a new aggregation that's coming in Elasticsearch 6.0. Um, it's called the Significant Text Aggregation, and that probably sounds familiar to a number of you. Um, so it's just like the Significant Terms Aggregation, in that it finds what we call the uncommonly common. So it basically finds interesting keywords or um, that in the text of your search results. So if you search for bird flu, it might tell you H5N1 uh, and that kind of thing. Um, you can check out my channel for other examples um, and discussions of what goes into the significance ranking algorithms. And there's a talk on sampling and significance that uses diagrams like this to show you exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about things being significant rather than popular. So significant terms is, uh, sorry, significant text is building on exactly the same algorithms. It just gets its data from a different place. Um, so the problem many people have with significant terms is that it essentially overloads your JVM. Um, in order to use it, you can't use doc values. You have to use um, a field data, data structure, which is essentially loading all the words from all the documents into RAM. Uh, and not surprisingly, many people are uh, unwilling to do this on, on large indexes. Um, so unfortunately, significant terms doesn't generally get used very often um, on free text as a result of this, which is unfortunate really because that's what it was originally designed to work with. So we have a new aggregation called significant text and you use it in exactly the same way as significant terms, um, except that we would always recommend you use it with a sampler aggregation to look at uh, the top handful of documents. When I want to say a handful, I mean perhaps you know, a hundred or a thousand uh, documents because what we're going to do for each of these documents that match our search results or our query is to load the original JSON off the disk and analyze it and then start scrutinizing the frequency of term use inside those documents. But without having to load all of uh, the non-matching documents content into RAM. So the sampler aggregation isn't just about speeding up the queries and using less RAM. Um, it's actually beneficial if you look at less stuff because the stuff you look at is in inevitably going to be of higher quality. The relevance ranking algorithms, if you have a fuzzy query, will naturally bring to the top of the search results the most interesting and relevant documents. So it only makes sense to uh, perform your analytics on the things that match most closely to your search results. So our search results, if you like, are a, a fuzzy set. So things aren't either in it or out of it, they're in it to a degree. And the sampler aggregation is making sure that you're focusing and concentrating your analysis on the things that are very, very much part of that set according to the, uh, the significance and relevance ranking. So underneath that, <clears throat> you put your significant text, not significant terms, as a significant text aggregation. Uh, and you list the name of the field where you're going to be looking up uh, the frequencies of the words that you find interesting words in. As I said before, it will actually parse the original JSON for the top matching documents um, on the fly. So here's some example results. Um, I'm looking at the, uh, a data set from uh, Signal Media, who've uh, kindly put together a, a million news articles scraped from the web. And if we search for bird flu here, we can see that obviously flu and avian are significant. Harris vaccines were the first company to be granted uh, the rights to develop a vaccine for bird flu. Um, so it's one of the key prominent uh, uh, pieces of information that come out of this set of res results. And as mentioned before, H5N1 is the actual technical term for, for bird flu. So all good results. And this is exactly what significant text is designed to find. But um, life isn't quite as simple as that, unfortunately. When we're dealing with text, um, the sort of data that you get back from a typical data set like the ones um, that Signal Media provide is often garbage. Um, so the word flu is in there, but we've got some real kind of garbagey looking words in here, what you might call dog eggs. Um, so in amongst the good stuff, you've got all these kind of oddities that start to come through. Uh, and this is not uncommon to find this kind of stuff. So a large part of what significant text is trying to do is tackle this problem of the noise that tends to come through. So we need to sort of do a little bit of a deep dive here into what makes this noise. So if you actually look at um, EBI and why that's connected to flu, if you run a query for that, you see examples of uh, many different documents, all of which have very similar content. <clears throat> Excuse me. So EBI is the name of a local uh, state agent 
uh, where there was an outbreak of avian flu in this Dallas news, uh, newspaper, um, put Ebby alongside uh, these hyperlinks out to these other news stories, which are happening on the same day, but are actually disconnected. Um, actually, when I looked at the website, Ebby wasn't associated with uh, the bird flu outbreak. That was old news. Um, the article on Ebby now has a new set of links, uh, one of which is a jaguar escaping from a, a local zoo. So you, if you didn't realize what was going on here, you might think that Ebby and died and bird flu and jaguar were connected. You might start thinking that she died as a result of bird flu or an escaped jaguar, but obviously these are kind of unintended correlations in the data. And the real reason for that is that the noisy text that you scrape up from the internet and many other different um, data sources often has these kind of what they call boilerplate sections to the content. So you have the sort of navigation menus at the top, you have the side links on the side with um, other news stories that are happening that day. You might have footer notices at the bottom of the web page with copyright notices and postal addresses and all these kinds of things. And it would be quite a pain to have to uh, clean these things out. So one strategy for coping with this that I tried was um, rather than using a sampler aggregation, we have another uh, form of sampler called the diversified sampler. So it's similar to the sampler. You say how many docs you want. In this case, again, we want 200 docs from each shard. Um, but you can designate a field, in this case, the news source or the company that provided the news, and you can put a limit on how many results you want to take from each value that you find in that field. So in this case, we're not going to get any more than 10 documents from uh, the Dallas News Net or, or whatever the website was here. Um, and that's potentially a way of uh, limiting the effects of the navigation, the boilerplate stuff that goes into that particular website's page structure. But it can be quite hard to figure out what's the right number to pick for this sort of diversification. So it's less than ideal way of tackling the problem. And it doesn't tackle the whole problem either. Um, there are other forms of near duplicate content, and it's not just about boilerplate. Um, you can get cut and paste reuse of uh, press releases uh, being put out, um, tend to appear in lots of different news articles and lots of different websites, maybe slightly reworked. Um, you get retweets, syndicated news. If you reply to people in email chains, it tends to include a copy of everything they just sent to you in the reply. Um, when people are uh, quoted or represented in, in articles, often there's a cut and paste of their biography or quotes that they might have had. So the diversified sampler tackles some of the problems, but it doesn't tackle all of them. Um, but we do have um, a function which, I don't know, I've called it super duper text deduper. So it's an internal part of the significant text aggregation, which is going to do du deduplication for us. So as it's loading documents from the disk, um, what it will do is it will actually automatically eliminate sequences of text it's seen before. So I've drawn this here in red and green. So the green stuff is the novel stuff that is kind of new or different to other web pages. And the red stuff is things that we've seen before on previous pages. And it automatically detects sequences of six or more words together. And this seems to be quite an effective way of uh, removing duplicate content um, as you're loading these, these hits from, the, from the, uh, the search index. So it's quite simple to use. All you do is you say filter duplicate, duplicate text true. Um, and then it will turn on this deduplication functionality. Uh, so what it's actually doing behind the scenes under the covers is it's taking each word, like the quick brown fox jumped over, it's um, hashing that modulo 256, and then arranging it into this tree structure, um, which means that it can look things up very, very quickly and determine if a sequence of words has actually been seen before, and precisely how many times it's been seen before. So it's quite an effective way of spotting these six word sequences um, and then removing them um, from your content. So it will essentially color it red and it will be eliminated from the search results. So let's have a look at examples of this in use. So I'm going to flip around to my browser here, and I'm going to query uh, the Signal news media data, um, these news articles, and I'm going to look for all the documents that mention Elasticsearch. 
I'm going to use a sampler to say, you know, I don't want to overload my RAM, so I only want to look at some of the top quality matching documents. And I'm going to use significant text on the content field. So if I run that, then the significant words that come out are obviously Elasticsearch. That's exactly what we search for. But then we have examples of this noisy stuff that I was talking about, things like currency, Akori, Posmantia, very strange and unusual words. Um, but when you look at them, if I run the query Elasticsearch and Posmantia, to sort of deep dive on where this is coming from, uh, we can see that it's talking about a person called Mike Posmantia, and he happens to be a judge in this uh, competition. And there's various different nominees, lots of different projects being judged. And lots of news articles have picked up this press release and put it out as uh, content. Um, if you Google it, you can actually find examples of the original web page. So it's quite a long article here. So this is uh, here, Mike Pasmantia. That's the unusual word that was picked up as significant because it's seen in lots of places. And the only time it's seen, it's in conjunction with... Uh, you guessed it, Elasticsearch somewhere down here. So this is a, one of the several projects that's being judged is a security visualization engine that mentions Elasticsearch. So like Ebby and the Jaguar and Bird Flu, uh, Mike's uh, Posmantio has been uh, associated with Elasticsearch. Um, and statistically that makes sense, but if you actually ignore duplicate text, then stuff like that just disappears. So I'm going to rerun that same query, but this time I'm going to ask for the duplicate text to be filtered. And when I run that, um, this is without any massaging, by the way, this is the, from the raw data. The keywords for Elasticsearch are Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. And we've removed all of kind of the noise words. So this works with other things as well. You know, I, I tried it with examples for things like Brexit. Um, if you search for Brexit, then you get some good stuff, and again, some dog eggs. You get things like uh, umbrella. That's a misspelling of the word umbrella that was re reused by cut and pastes of the same press release or the same news story, but the misspelling went unchecked, and consequently, the only ever uses you see of that particular token or that string is in conjunction with articles about Brexit. So it's seen as significant until we turn on the deduplication. And then we get Brexit, Farage, UKIP, and referendum. So it's all good, you know, strong quality signals. So this is just perhaps the beginning of what we might start doing with looking for significance in text. Um, what I'd like to do in future is to be able to identify things which are other than just uh, individual keywords. I'd like to be able to detect phrases like put the word Nigel and Farage next to each other and say Nigel Farage is a phrase. Um, so that's, that's uh, an example of the sort of thing that we can do in addition um, now that we have a dedicated uh, aggregation for looking at text uh, and analyzing it in search results. So um, stay tuned uh, for more updates. Okay, hope this was useful.